Hello everyone and welcome to join this presentation on OpenEdge deployment options. My name is Tommy Mannikka. I'm from Nokia Data Center Solutions, uh, where I work as the hardware architect for the OpenEdge hardware. I will be telling you about the OpenEdge uh, configuration options for both indoor and outdoor installations and also some example, examples will be given. On this slide you can see a typical flow of operations uh, from configuration to deployment. On the left side uh, there's a snapshot of uh, Nokia's configurator tool which allows the user to, to configure the hardware on server level, chassis level and rack level. The typical inputs for, for configuration in general are, are application requirements. So for example, the uh, number of CPU cores, the amount of memory, the throughput of networking, but also site requirements are important, uh, like uh, what kind of power feed uh, is supported on the site, uh, what kind of environmental conditions, uh, the space constraints, airflow direction, and, and, and so on. So once the configurator tool is finished, uh, it will uh, output a, a file uh, that uh, contains um, detailed uh, information on the configuration structure and also the bill of materials. And uh, this data is then used at the factory uh, doing the integration, building the system uh, from uh, ground up. So once the uh, integration is finished and the system is fully tested, it is packaged and then shipped to the site. At the site, uh, then the task of the personnel over there is to, to power up the system and, and do the commissioning. Now let's take a closer look at the server level configuration options. In this picture, you can see a two-use service led. In a two-use service led, uh, there are four hot swap storage or SSD slots in the front panel, all supporting SATA or NVMe. There are several riser options. Uh, the risers define the connectivity between the CPU and the PCIe extension slots. Or, or the uh, SSDs. So this gives the possibility to optimize the performance of, of the server based on specific needs. There are three uh, PCIe expansion slots in the front panel, all full height. Two of the slots are also full length, and this makes it possible to use a high performance uh, acceleration card or a GP GPU uh, with the power consumption up to 300 watts. For the CPUs, basically all Intel Xeon scalable family uh, SKU options are available, ranging from the low end of a uh, few cores up to high end of 28 cores. There are two fan options. Uh, airflow from front to rear or from rear to front. This is to enable uh, the hardware to, to match whatever is the airflow direction at the site. Memory options, uh, there are up to six DDR4-2933 uh, memory slots available and also to uh, persistent memory module slots, um, uh, for example, uh, Intel Optane kind of uh, DIMMs. In addition to the uh, front panel hot swap storage, there are also two M.2 uh, SSDs uh, inside the server under the cover. So both 80 millimeters and, and uh, 
one ten millimeter uh, form factors are supported, and also uh, SATA and NVMe are are optional. And uh, below the uh, PCIe expansion slots, there's also the OCP mezzanine version 2.0 for networking uh, mezzanines. Then next to the chassis level configuration. A 3U chassis, like shown here, uh, can accommodate uh, up to five 1U slots, or in, in place of two 1U slots, uh, you can install a one 2U slot. Uh, slots typically being server slots or switch slots. And um, also a BBU, a battery backup unit slot, uh, is supported in the lower right hand corner, slot one. Slot one has uh, an additional power connector in the, in, in the back plane, uh, allowing for uh, higher currents to flow from the battery backup unit to the rest of the system when in case the uh, power feed fails for some reason. For the power feed there are options uh, for AC and DC and also uh, for different applications uh, or different form factors of the chassis let's say 2U uh, there are also lower power PSUs available, so 1200 watts uh, and uh, 2000 watts. And RMC is part of all uh, chassis configurations. Next is the rack level configuration. So this picture is actually showing a, a rack level blueprint uh, the blueprint means that the part of the details in these configurations are, are predetermined and, and fixed, like the location of the, the, the hardware units is fixed uh, and the networking uh, connectivity is fixed, but still the user can uh, define uh, what is the number of chassis, what is the number of switches or PDUs in the system. So giving the, the, the user to the possibility to, to uh, scale to the, to the needs of the application. On top of the rack, uh, there are the PDUs. The PDUs are, are the means to adapt to, to the site, uh, the higher power or site uh, power con connection. Uh, and also uh, the PDUs will uh, distribute uh, the power feed within in the rack. There are several several uh, PDU options. There's minus 48 uh, volts DC, uh, 400 volts AC three phase, 230 volts AC one phase. Uh, then for the North American market, uh, there are uh, PDUs with uh, input voltage of 208 volts, three phase, and one phase. Uh, the switches are located in the middle of the rack. They provide connectivity between the servers and, and also the uplinks, uh, so the path uh, out of the rack. Uh, the switch is, is of type uh, 32 times uh, 100 gigs, and there are two options, a single leaf or a dual star uh, switch fabric. Above and below the switches are the open edge chassis. So there can be up to uh, eight 3U chassis in, in this one, one cabinet. Uh, the minimum is, is one. The rack seen here is a 36U open edge seismic rack, uh, zone four compliant. Uh, but uh, it could be any any other standard 19-inch rack. Like mentioned, uh, the entire rack is uh, fully pre-integrated at the factory. 
all power and networking cabling is also connected uh, at the factory and also tested. Once the integrated, integrated track is uh, received uh, at the customer side, the next steps are just to connect the power, connect the uplinks and, and uh, start commissioning. Nokia has contributed the Open Edge chassis design as an open uh, accepted product. Uh, so the entire design package uh, is, is available at the OCP website. The OpenEdge servers are contributed uh, as open inspired products and uh, their specifications are available at the OCP website. Also at the bottom of the page, you can see two links. Uh, the first uh, pointing to uh, Nokia's OpenEdge uh, server portfolio and, and the second link to Open Compute Marketplace where you can find all the open edge products that are currently available.